committing a crime. They're denying the right to work. It's a basic human right for our members to get out on construction. They've got trades people. They can't get a start anywhere. It's wrong. I'm not on the blacklist myself, but I've still got 30 years left in the industry. And if this situation isn't addressed now, I've got 30 years left where this could just roll and roll and roll and blight my future. Our union's responding to this vile discriminatory victimisation of its own best activists and its own members, you know, being de legally denied work just because they've raised health and safety issues on site or because they belong to a union. Those that have fought hard, you know, they've fought the hardest to end discrimination in the workplace. <laughs> We need union safety reps on construction projects. They will stop the carnage out there in this industry and the fatality rate and the major incident rates are going up. And we don't want that. We want union reps in place to do our job, work with employers to bring the fatality and major accident rates down. These sites are dangerous. They're the most dangerous sites you could ever risk to be, either by falling or things hitting you on the head, working in unsavoury conditions. Back in my day, if you were building a greenfield site and it was in an 18 month job, you could expect three to five deaths on the site. Years ago, when I was 15 and I've been on different sites, I worked in asbestos. I've since found that I've got plural plaque. I can't claim because I, I believe that that's been done away with. My brother died. He died of um, mesothelioma. He worked as a dry liner for years and it take, took 40 years for it to come out. And he died within a year to 18 months after it was told that he had it. I've had 16 weeks work, means seven and a half years. Every time I get my job, they throw me off. Because the only so. crime is that I've, raised, I've, looked, I've worked in a safe working place for me and the younger lads, you know. That's not, that's not much, is it? It's not hard. No. It's human rights abuse, it's illegal. We've got them all in the eye court soon as well. We've got CIS workers unable to get direct employment. You can't organise with self-employed, the employers know that. It's always been divisive. And when we do get a bit of direct employment, we've got a job to get a union rep to come forward because of the blacklist. It requires this entire labour movement to get on board with this and finally end this discrimination against these. It's an attack on the entire labour movement. It's at the very heart of organising. And if you can't organise, where's the union's going to be in years to come? I was never blacklisted before, I'd never had trouble getting work. I had a issue in the Olympics where a fellow was removed off site. The foreman came up to me boasting that we don't want him because he's on blacklist. I told him what the foreman was saying. Then they just started threatening me, I had to call the police. Eventually they sat me and then I couldn't get any work. I was a year out of work straight. I eventually got a job through someone I knew and it was doing for a small tunneling contractor. Then it goes, oh, I've got another job for you down on Crossrail. I've got that as well. In a couple of weeks, the management came in to me and goes, you're a union man. I sent an email off to my officer. I said, look, I've been identified here. I think I better become a steward just to try and protect my position. Shortly after, raising safety issues, I was banned from the construction site eight weeks, stuck in a tin hut. One wasn't allowed to do any work. They eventually, they just sat the whole company off the site. I said to him, well, I'm going to pick it. I'm not going to get a job. I'm going to stand on that gate. Twenty-five of them are all back working on Crossrail now. One of them was seen talking to me for about 15 minutes. He couldn't get on this project again for six months. The other one that hasn't been able to get work on Crossrail again is the safety net. Safety net's in the same boat as me. Propaganda. 
they're making the reinforcement for cross rail, they're all bolted together through the tunnel, aren't they? Well, it's almost identical to the segments for the Channel Tunnel. Fifteen years ago, they were earning more money then on that job than what they're earning today. I got a call from uh, a Unite member who was self-employed, CIS worker, and he said, there's problems down on the job at uh, Chatham. I said, all right, I'll come on down and have a look. And uh, I've got 10 sign-ups there and then on the day. The job had gone out of tender and the rates were going to drop from £16 an hour down to £7 an hour. And the attitude was take it or leave it. It's not even the living wage, is it, of £8.50 an hour? which people should expect in this day and age on such a high profile job. We want to defend working people's interests, yours as well. OK, well, if you talk it's to... It's in your uh, interest. So it's in your interest, my interest, everybody's interest. We want to talk to people talk get to a decent rate of pay for doing a high profile job. That job is a billion pound contract. Yeah, we Billions need to of pounds to being spent on that contract. It. Sorry, you're not allowed to film there, OK? If you can move on, please. Oh, yeah. I couldn't even get to see the guys when I came down here. I had to meet them outside the gate where we had a demo. The union members that I recruited all got moved on. Uh, there was a bit of union busting going on as well. We approached the company with that. It went into denial, of course, but we know it's happened. And uh, at the end of the day, Crossrail don't want a unionised, organised project. We're health and safety reps. The Chatham Dockyard, 200 years ago, was the biggest shipyard in the world. We were a high profile industrial area in the past, repairing, you know, Admiralty Dockyard, other big engineering companies. Thatcher closes everything down. So you never just had the dockyard closed, you had a, a raft of engineering factories that also went. I want you all off site now. You are sorry, mate. I want you to off site. Off the site. Are doing any harm, You're not allowed to film in here for starters. What, in the whole area? Or? Yeah, you're not allowed to film in here at all. I'd like to see what, what you've taken. If you'd stopped and asked at the gate, you wouldn't have got in. So can you leave now, please? Okay. I've been a trade union member since I was 15, and I'm now at the age of 63. I assume that I was blacklisted way back in the 80s. I took the steward's job back in the 80s on a well-known site. Afterwards, I found it very difficult to get employment. In fact, I was out of work on and off for three years, nothing full time. I did finally get a job on a building site. It's just by pure luck that I got this job and I've lasted for two years. But after that job finished, I was again out of work and I had to leave the industry for nine years. And I went into a factory. That factory job finished and I went back on site again, but only on small jobs. And I ended up as a, as a cleaner for, for the last 12 years. Many people I know who have took stewards' jobs are in the same position. The reason I was blacklisted in the end was many years of trade union activity. Since the trade unions became organised on that site, there were very, had very few stoppages. Nearly everything was agreed by proper negotiations, etc. The pay talks came up, and at this particular time it was going to be very contentious because there were a lot of changes they want, they, that we knew they wanted to make. They were also pressing hard to really do away with the Fawley site agreement and push us into the national agreement, which would have been much less favourable. What I was suggesting to my fellow stewards was if push came to shove, we wouldn't all go out on strike or anything. We'd all come to work, except for maybe the drivers and they would pick it legally. But the main point was we would all come to work in our cars, on average, say, 1,500, 2,000 men. And each car would stop, which is the law, and ask the picket, what are you protesting about? The traffic delay that that would cause because of the geographic situation of SO's refinery would have been horrendous. Within the I suppose 10 days of thinking that strategy up, I was out. From then on, I never worked until I started doing care. And it affected my family quite deeply as well. In fact, uh, 
I'm divorced from that period and uh, my own two real blood young girls, my daughters by blood and marriage etc, ain't spoke to me since then. I'd heard through the media about blacklisting in construction and I was also lobbied by colleagues in the unions and uh, colleagues in the Labour Party. I consulted my colleagues and, and uh, took the initiative of actually drafting a motion based on um, something that they did at Knowsley, Knowsley Borough Council, uh, which came from the GMB union. We wanted to change the tendering process to tighten it up so that uh, companies coming to us for work had to state that they weren't using blacklisting. At the March for Council, it received unanimous support from all councillors of all parties. I believe the Hull did that before we did, and uh, Plymouth City Council, their leader, contacted me after he heard about what, what we'd done, and I believe that they've also put something through their council in motion uh, fairly recently as well. It's got to be defeated. We've got to find it. That's the trouble, because it's so secret. That, so I also urge, as well as campaigning, I also urge people to find where it's happening and to report it, to blow the whistle, like we were doing at the protests last week. Concern. We're getting members who are out of work at the moment. Some we've now discovered they are on the blacklist, and we have got some major construction, construction engineering sites in the area, and we want these guys to have work. I'm not getting regular work. I'm only working for agencies here and there, and work is very inconsistent. With the agency, the cult of the agencies, I've been in and out of work, and you just get, you end up with a bad name no matter what. Because cause you're either on the phone, you've got a problem, they haven't paid you. They don't get no holiday pay, don't get no sick pay, running like that. You'd always have to go miles. Your job, someone from Reading's working in Southampton, but you're working in Reading, do you know what I mean? And that's, that's all the time, that, that's the last 10 years that's been going on. To get your money, you've got to pay 20 quid a week. To get your pay, get paid. That's admin fees. week to week don't you you know I mean if you ain't going to get a job full time PAYE you know for a good legitimate company then you, you have to take what you can they'd phone you up we want to pay you this we want to pay you that there's a tax fiddle in it do you know what I mean all this business was going on all the time We've seen slowly manufacturing disappear. There's hardly any major manufacturers now. There's small companies that are still here, that are still hanging on. But I mean, the news of Ford's going was a real sort of body blow. And we've seen Pirelli's slowly, um, you know, disappear from the city as well. And there's a number of other companies. I know what they're like, mate. They've been doing it for years. They have been. government's austerity measures with the recession. There's a lot of solidarity and sympathy from fellow union members. Their austerity measures are not working. Local communities are suffering because of their measures and we're blacklisting people because they're union members. That's wrong. It's our right to have a union and to be a union member. No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! What do we want? I feel rumors of war, rumors of war.